this will be a, a, a talk about how AGL enables uh, developers to create web applications for the platform, uh, the architecture needed to make it work, um, how to create web apps for the platform, and how uh, we can expose uh, system services uh, to, to web apps, and an um, update for our, our plans for the web application support on AGL. Uh, here is just a little agenda with the topics for today. So, hi, um, I'm Roger. I, I work at uh, Igalia, mostly working on Chrome OS projects and also on uh, AGL, um, working on supporting uh, WAM and web applications for the demos. And Igalia is an open source consultant based, based on Galician in, in Spain. Um, we have more than a hundred engineers over, over the globe, and we have experience with uh, web rendering bro uh, for for Chromium WebKit and also other open source projects like like the kernel and um, JavaScript engines, uh, graphics, multimedia. And we are the second um, main contributor to to Chromium. Uh, right after uh, Google, and the second main con contributor to WebKit, uh, right after Apple. And to understand how uh, web support works for AGL, we should start with WAM. Uh, WAM stands for a Web App Manager. It's based on the uh, Web uh, App Manager from the uh, WebOS uh, open source project. Uh, it, it's forked uh, to AGL and uh, adapted to the project needs. It's a runtime that uh, runs and manages web applications, um, manages the lifetime of the applications. Um, it's not framework specific. You can develop applications uh, using any front end um, that you want, uh, even React or Flutter or uh, Tailwind, CSS. Uh, I have a small demo at the end of, of the, the presentation uh, that uses Tailwind CSS. Um, because it's based on Chromium, we have out-of-the-box com compatibility with the uh, standard web APIs. Um, and the web standards move fast, so um, we need to constantly uh, upgrade Chromium, and on we, each update, we get support for new uh, APIs, and they, they are available for developers on, on the AGL platform through one. Um, like I said, it's built on, on top of the Chromium from the WebOS project. Uh, this means that uh, we are tied to the uh, release cycle. Uh, every time they release a new Chromium version, we, we need to fork it and apply uh, changes on top of it to, to ensure it is, it is compatible with AGL and make it work with the AGL platform. Um, it manages the, the life cycle of applications like launching, uh, terminating, suspending, and bringing the applications back to, to front. Um, there's uh, some uh, CPU usage, uh, optimization, and memory management implemented on, on the um, um, WebOS uh, Chromium fork that one takes uh, advantage of. And how does it work? Um, this slide is actually stolen from uh, my colleague's uh, talk at Fosden. I welcome you to, to watch it. Uh, it's a talk about the history of one, uh, how it works, the, um, the architecture, and where it's used. It's a pretty good talk. So um, this uh, diagram um, shows how it works for uh, the WebOS uh, platform, but it's pretty similar to what happens on AGL. So um, one 
spreads across uh, two different processes, the browser process and the renderer process. On the browser process, um, it handles calls that comes from the render process and actually communicate with system services. And this is done by um, a small library from the WebOS implementation that allow, allow us to add some pluggables. Um, in the case of WebOS, for example, there is the uh, Luna bus that it's injected on, on the renderer process and the main service is hosted on the, in the browser process. But in our case, it's the gRPC um, server and, and clients for in, internal IPC. And uh, one also um, takes advantage of the Ozone Wayland implementation that was done by uh, Igalia on Chromium and it um, communicates with the AGL compositor to, to be able to render uh, surfaces. Okay. So um, this is the main uh, screen of our HTML5 demo. And what happens is that um, when we start on the, um, the image, it launches multiple uh, one processes. Uh, the first process will be responsible to um, communicate with the AGL compositor, and all the other uh, processes uh, will launch and manage applications. Like um, on the left side, that panel is uh, the home screen application. On the right, it's the launcher application, and each icon is also. Um, HTML5 application. When we click on an icon, another one process uh, will run and it will be managed by, by the main process. Um, and these are all the, the demos that are, are present on, on that image. Uh, if you go to the auto, automotive uh, Linux Garrett, uh, you, you can filter for HTML5 and you, you will be able to check the code for all of them. And um, as an example of uh, how we leverage uh, from the um, Chrome architecture to communicate with system services, I can show how, um, how it's implemented. It's implemented the, how the infrastructure to launch an application is implemented on one. Um, the, the first is, uh, architecture slide is basically the, the right side of this, this one in, in simplified version. Uh, Lead CVE, it's a library compi compiled from the Chromium code that's used by one. And one uh, communicates with AppLaunchD up to, to launch new applications. Uh, AppLaunchD uh, starts new application by um, starting system services related to the installed applications. And um, one communicates with it uh, using uh, DBus and gRPC in the, in the future. Um, and those are the two classes um, I'm going to talk about uh, more in the, in the next slides. Uh, like I mentioned before, one spreads um, across the browser and renderer process. Um, the app service delegate AGL, it's the server class uh, responsible for receiving calls from the renderer processes. And AGL app service injection is uh, the code that's injected in the JavaScript context for all uh, one uh, applications. And let's say we, we have a list of applications and this uh, template that renders the icons and allows the user to start them. That's uh, code actually from our home screen application. Um, we want to use this start function and be able to, to start new applications. So um, these are the, the names uh, involved uh, on the on 
injecting the application service interface uh, on the JavaScript context. Um, the navigator is the uh, object that the browser uh, exposes with information about the browser itself. Uh, app service is the name of the application service that w we want to access, and I'm going to talk about only the start uh, function that uh, will be responsible to start new applications. And this is the code that uh, injects the call to the start on the um, <laughs> on the on the JavaScript con uh, context. The isolate is actually the V8 uh, context that's uh, available on every render process, every render process has a different one, and Jin is a um, helper library that makes it easier to interact with the V8 uh, JavaScript engine. And here we are only creating a, a new object that uh, has the start call and setting it to, to, to be a member of a parent. And here is the parent. The parent is the na navigator object. Uh, so we, we basically get a reference to this navigator object and inject our new object, the app service, in, into this object. And on JavaScript, we will be, be able to access a navigator that app service. But we, we need to be able to make a call. So um, here's another helper uh, function from, from Gene Library. Here we assign to the start uh, function the, the method from our injected class. So this class uh, will, will uh, communicate with the uh, service on the browser process. This is done by, by using Mojo, that's um, the IPC library that's used by Chromium. And this call on the render process will be um, serialized, uh, transferred to, to the browser process, and deserialized, executed, and the browser will, will return some, some value to the, to the render process. And on the browser process is uh, where actually the communication with app launch D happens. Uh, it receives the call, um, sets all parameters needed to, uh, to do a call using the DBus proxy uh, that um, is connected to app launch D. And um, it, it passes the um, arguments to start the, the new application. And so with this, we are able to write this, this function. And um, this application service will be available to all running instances of one. So uh, you can access the web services, the, the application service, uh, regardless of the framework that you use to build your uh, web application. Um, so uh, let's talk briefly about uh, how we can um, uh, clone and build um, the AGL, HTML5 uh, image. We need that to, to, to be able to understand how we can include a new application. So uh, there is this uh, getting started guide on the AGL wiki. Uh, there you can check all the supported boards and uh, all the instructions for uh, starting up, but basically you need uh, Google the pod tools to be able to clone all the repositories and uh, there's here's the um, command that you can use for building the uh, HTML5 image for your, your target architecture. So you, you can build for Renesis for uh, Raspberry Pi or QEMU or other platforms. And when you run that command, actually you, you um, build uh, two different uh, uh, recites for, 
for the HTML demo. Uh, one is the Chromium recite that will get the code, the whole code from the WebOS. Um, Chromium fork and build the libcd that will be used by one, and one creates the runtime that will be used by the platform to launch new notifications. And here is how you can flash it uh, to, to test on, on your hardware. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Then you can just um, boot in, in the, the board that you are using. And now I can speak about how you can create a, no, a new web application for the Agile web platform. So here's what, what's needed for, for a web application. You need to create an app info JSON file that contains some metadata like the name of the application and the type of the application that will be run, that w would be web in this case. Um, um, a directory with the code of, of your application containing a, a license file that's needed by Yocto. Um, and like I mentioned before, there is no dependence on any framework. You can develop your web applications any way you want. And first, you, you need to create your di directory, add your source code. And, and the license file, this uh, app config file I mentioned, and you need to create a new recipe for your application and, and add to the AGL tree. Uh, before the recent uh, app framework changes, uh, where the app, app framework was deprecated, it was possible to just um, copy a bundled um, web application to the image and install it using AFM YouTube, but this tool is not available anymore and right now the only way that we can use for adding a new application is to put it uh, in the AGL tree and bake a new image. And as an example, we, we are going to make an application that just uh, starts up and red redirects the user to the Jamando uh, main, main page. It's just um, a music service for uh, independent uh, artists. And this is the app info JSON file. Uh, contains um, some metadata, and the most important ones here is are the ID, uh, title type and the main the main file that's the the, the main H, uh, the HTML file that will be loaded when one starts managing this this application and this is the main uh, the, the index HTML page uh, just red this the, the user to jamando.com and uh, here is where we start to build our uh, recipe for the new web application. Um, for this uh, example, we can call it uh, HTML5 Jamendo uh, Git because I created uh, the Git repository on, on GitHub for it. And here is just the basic information. Uh, there is more information on, on the Yocto guides uh, about it. Uh, you. You can set the home page, um, a few build direct, director options here. And after that, you, need, you will need to set up the fetcher that's going to get your code. In my case, I hosted um, the demo on GitHub, but um, it's also possible to use other features like uh, um, SCP or local files, and there's the external source uh, option that can be used, and you can point um, to a, a local um, directory where you're building your image, and this is good for during development because you can you don't need to commit all your changes and um, get everything and bundle again. And this is how you set up this option that I, I mentioned. Um, you, you need to change your configuration files. 
indicate that you're using the external source uh, recipe and uh, just point to, to some file and to some directory with your code and build the, the image again. And finally, we can set up how the, the application will, will be installed. We need to tell it that um, it, it's going to use the template for Agile uh, web applications. This is going to make it um, use the generated systemd files that uh, use one to, to start this application and point to, to the correct directory. And on the install here, um, you can, for example, if you are using other frameworks, uh, how npm install or whatever your web application needs to to be built and, and deployed. And after building the, after creating the folder with a new application, you need to add it somehow to the AGL tree, and you can do that by adding it to the package group of the HTML file image. So you, you have just a list of applications here. You just need to add the, the new directory that you created and then the next time you bake your new image, the, the, this new application will be added as well. And one option to test your applications is to use QNU. Um, here is the command that you can use after uh, running it. You can connect to it using um, any VNC client. And this is the demo application that I showed running on, on QEMU and I'm connected to the QEMU image, uh, the running image using VNC. Uh, anything that's available on Chromium for um, for debugging and inspecting your source code is also available for uh, for AGL. You just need to do some extra setup to redirect um, to the correct ports. Uh, here is the export that you can use, and uh, for doing that, and after running the QEMU again, you can connect to the uh, to, to your image and here is an image of the remote tools uh, connected to the sample application. You can inspect for uh, style and, and scripts and anything that's available on, on Chromium for, for debugging and uh, inspecting your running application. And um, currently, we have um, some options to interact with services in Agile platform. And most of the demo applications are communicating with the um, Cooksa Vault server. Um, if you want to know more about Cooksa, there were some um, nice presentations about it. Uh, yesterday, you can check the recordings. Um, and on web applications, you can create a web socket. It's part of the standard library shipped with Chromium to connect it to the listening port of the Cooksa Vault server. And I included this, this demo um, that connects with Cooksa. The, the current uh, HBlock application is already uh, communicating with Cooksa server, but I decided to keep this one because it uses a different uh, framework for web. It uses Tewine CSS. And also, if you want to understand how communication is happening, there's um, a little text box that shows the messages that are going and coming from, from the server. It's, it's good for understanding uh, how the communication happens and this is how you can connect to the Cooksa server. Um, you basically set up a new web socket and authorize and, and set up um, which signals you are subscribed to. 
Um, this our token is a JSON web token uh, on the um, demo platform. We use the um, super user token that shipped uh, with Kuxa. It's an app for, for testing. And the other parameters that are on this slide, like the request ID, um, they are user-defined uh, parameters. A uh, request ID, you can set an ID that it's going to be sent to the Kuxa server. And when you receive a reply, we can compare um, the values to know uh, which response is assigned to, to the reports, request you made. And I added a few links with uh, documentation for the Cooks of all server and the specs uh, of the signals that, that you can access. And here is how you can subscribe to, to a signal. Um, after doing that, you can, you will start receiving message from, from the server. Um, and when you receive something on, on this web socket, you can just check for data and, and see what you received. Uh, that's how uh, we implemented it um, on our demos. And just uh, a couple of helper uh, functions to get a value from, from some path on, on Kuxa or, or set values. And here's where you can access the, all the sample code that I added in this presentation. This um, is going to help to understand how you can add new applications. And speaking about our future plans for, for the AGO web support, um, we plan to upgrade to the new uh, Chromium milestone that's, uh, that was shipped by, by the WebOS project, that's um, milestone 94. We plan to in improve how uh, application is, the applications are deployed. Um, currently, the only option is to add a new recipe um, and bake a new image. We are planning to um, make it easier, like uh, adding bundled uh, applications again. Uh, we need to bring back uh, Chromium as an application in the new images. Um, it's not working because, um, if I'm not mistaken, it, um, it it wasn't ready to work with App Launch D. Um, to, another plan is to make it possible to use uh, gRPC um, on the web app side. Uh, we, we already have um, gRPC server and clients implemented in, in Chromium, but um, we can, for example, use a, a proto file for the, from the cooks uh, um, Project and generate code that can be used on by the uh, web applications, it, and this is because um, gRPC web needs a proxy server running on the AGL platform, and we need to check what would would be the, the best option for that. And uh, we need to update Chromium to communicate with um, App Launch D using gRPC. Uh, right now, which um, it uses uh, Dbuzz, and Dbuzz is going to be deprecated from App Launch D. And uh, one thing that um, we are going to do is to experiment with CEF um, instead of Chromium from the WebOS project uh, to, to build one. And about CEF, um, we think that uh, it brings uh, a few advantages uh, to the process. Um, it's uh, easy, easy to switch to a new branch. Uh, every time uh, a new branch is released on, on Chromium, a new milestone branch, uh, the same branch is created on CF and maintained uh, there. 
Um, we don't have, we would not have dependence on the web Chromium web OS release cycle. Um, it, it takes some, some time to re release a new version. Uh, for example, we are using Chromium 91 and the next one will be Chromium 94. We, we, we would be able to switch faster to new branches and get uh, updates. Um, with, with new features and security updates, for example. And CF is um, usually only a week behind of the released Chromium branch because they need to manually maintain it and apply any, any fixes. Um, and that's it, basically. Um, we have our contact information uh, of the three guidelines most involved in AGL development. You can contact any, any of us if you have any questions. And yep, that's, that's it. If um, anyone has any, any question, we think we have some time. All right, seems like no, so um, I think we can, we can close it. Thank you.